G'day, it's AOS Coach here, and in this video, I'm gonna bite off more than I can possibly chew and attempt to highlight the key synergies in Cities of Sigmar's Battle Tome. Now, if you are not new to this channel, you've been here for a while, you know that I love this Battle Tome. It is one of my absolute favorites. I am a Cities player through and through. However, it is complicated. It is probably the most complicated battle tome I have seen in Age of Sigma. It combines the free people, the dispossessed, the wanderers, the Phoenix Temple, the Ironwald Arsenal, the Devoted of Sigma, Order Serpentis, and Darkling Covens, and I probably missed a bunch as well. Because this book has brought together so many different factions, it's brought together different synergies, but also a lot of units that don't work together. This will cause you issues in your list building. Now, if I looked at every single combination in this battle tome, I probably would be here for the next 10 years. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight the key synergies, break it down by phase, and if I have missed one, guys, pop it in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you guys are noticing that maybe I haven't captured. So without further ado, let's look at the different parts of this battle tome. When you're looking to improve your spell casting chances and, and make it harder for your opponent to unbind, the Celestial Hurricanum with or without the Battle Mage is going to be awesome to, to get some consistency in your, in your army. The ability you're looking at is the Locus of Azir, and that's going to add plus one to the spell casting for friendly Collegiate Arcane Wizards wholly within 12 inches of the Celestial Hurricane. And if you are looking for units that are going to really take advantage of these synergies, maybe you've got multiple wizards, things like the Battle Mage, the Battle Mage on Griffin, the uh, Luminarch, as well as Hurricanums, all of them have the Collegiate Arcane keyword, and you're going to get yourself plus one to cast when you're in Holy within 12. If there is a particular spell or an endless spell that you really need to cast, maybe it's just one spell as opposed to uh, multiple spells, then the, the Sorceress will give you the really solid chance to increase your spell casting ability through the Blood Sacrifice rule. And what that's going to allow you to do is pick one friendly Darkling Covens unit within th uh, three inches, and you're basically slain a model. If you do so, you do get to add plus two to the cast roll for the Sorceress, and a little Stabby Stabby, and you remove one of those models. Now, who can you Stabby Stabby? You can Stabby Stabby either the Dread Spear, the Dark Shard, the Bl uh, Black Guard, the Executioner, or the Bleak Sword. Most people will go with something like the Dread Spears due to the low cost. However, all of those units can help your Sorceress get it a plus two to cast. If you're wanting to keep your opponent's spellcasting at bay, maybe find yourself the reverse of the Hurricanum, uh, you will find yourself with the Luminarch of Hish. Now, the Luminarch of Hish, again, with or without the White Battle Mage, the rule you're looking for here is the Locus of Hish that allows you to get plus one to the un unbinding roll of friendly Collegiate Arcane Wizards wholly within 12 inches of the friendly Luminarch of Hish. Now, the Battle Mage, the Battle Mage on Griffin, the Hurricanum, and the Luminarch are all keyworded up to get yourself a plus one to unbind. So if you're looking to keep your opponent uh, at bay, you've got a couple of wizards in your army, uh, this will synergize quite well to kind of stop them from casting their spells. If you're looking for a bit of extra magical defense, the Anointed on Foot, the Rune Lord, uh, looking in your Stormcast choices, your one in every four Stormcast, might find yourself a Knight in Cantor. Things like the Lord Arcanum, the uh, Longbeards, the Nomad Princes, there's a lot of additional uh, magical defense in this army. My favorite are the ones that I just mentioned earlier. The reason for it is the anointed on foot, so not the anointed on a flame phoenix or a frost phoenix, but rather the just the anointed on foot. It has a rule called Blessing of the Earth Phoenix. And what that allows you to do is you can attempt to dispel one endless spell in your hero phase or attempt to unbind one spell in your hero phase. So you've got two options. You can get rid of an endless spell as well as attempt to unbind an enemy here, uh, enemy spell. So that can be quite helpful just to get a little bit extra magical defense or maybe even to unbind or dispel your own endless spell once you put it on the table. Uh, there's, and there's very good reasons why you might want to do that. 
The second one is, alternatively, if you're not building an elf kind of build, but rather you're going down the Dwarden build, you might find yourself with the Rune Lord with the Runes of Spell Breaking. And in a very similar vein, you can attempt to dispel one endless spell in your hero phase, as well as attempt to unbind one spell in the enemy hero phase. It will get an extra little bit of uh, cream on the top and you will get to add plus two to the dis dispel and plus two to the unbind rolls for this model. So a little bit more consistency. However, if you are going with down the route with something like Phoenix Guard, you might find the anointed is better served in your army. If you are taking Dewarden, you may find that the Rune Lord is going to synergize better. If you're taking neither, choose what works for you when it comes to spells and other little things you might have in your army. In addition, you know, Cities of Sigma allows you to have one in every four models be a Stormcast model, and this might actually bring in the Night Encanto. I think the Night Encanto has incredible value. Uh, it has a really good armor save, a uh, good amount of wounds. It gives you access to the Stormcast um, uh, endless spells. And the rule that I really like here from a magical defense point of view is the Void Storm Scroll. And what that allows you to do is once per battle, when the enemy or when a model uh, attempts to uh, to cast a spell, and you get a chance to unbind, you can instead basically go no deal for you. You automatically unbind without a spell roll. So if you want to stop somebody from casting uh, an important spell or an important buff, or they're going to do a lot of damage to you, instead of rolling the dice and chancing for an unbind, you could just straight up say no. But it is a once per game uh, ability. You've either got some other things that I did mention earlier. The Nomad Prince uh, will subtract one to the casting, dispelling, and unbinding for a hero within 16 inches. So should your Nomad Prince be close and to an enemy wizard, uh, it will ca cause the, the subtraction to casting, spelling, and unbinding. If you do have long beards, so they are a, du a Duarden unit, they can grumble and attempt to dispel an endless spell. And the Lord Arcanum, again, one of the Stormcast models, the Lord Arcanum on foot, it can allow you to move an endless spell, an additional D6 for a command point. So should a predatory endless spell be coming your way, if you want to get it away from your army, uh, Geminids is a perfect example. You could move Geminids closer to the enemy, maybe even to hurt them for a command point using the Lord Arcanum. When it comes to moving and charging, we'll start off with the Sorceress on foot as well as the Sorceress on Black Dragon. They both have the same rule, Command Underlings. Now this is a command ability where it allows you to pick one friendly Darkling Covens unit wholly within 12 inches, and that will allow them to run and still shoot or run and still charge in the same turn. So that's gonna be awesome to be able to increase the board presence. Um, when you think about things like moving and shooting or running and shooting, that's gonna really benefit something like the, the Dark Shards. Or if you've got something like the Black Guard, your Executioners, your Bleak Swords, or your, um, your Dread Spears, it is going to allow you to uh, move up the board and take up more of the board space, take on the objective a lot earlier, or uh, potentially deny your opponent from deep striking you uh, much sooner or much further away by uh, adding that run roll to already the fast movement of Elves. Your free guild general on Griffin has a rule called the Rousing Battle Cry that allows you to add one to the charge rolls for friendly free guild units when they're wholly within 12 inches of the hero. So the, the free guild general on Griffin. Now this is gonna really boost things like your demigriff knights, your great swords, your free guild guard, all of these units that want to be in combat, they wanna charge. And things like the Demigriff Knights are going to get benefits or, or bonuses for charging. While if you're trying to position your position or get you know a, a, one of your shooting units into combat in desperate times, maybe you want to get your crossbowmen or your handgunners. This will also work really well with things like your um, your outriders and your pistoliers. Your pistoliers do some shooting on the charge as well, so uh, that will combine quite nicely, um, especially with things like yeah your Demigriffs and your your pistoliers maybe support each other. In addition, the Rousing Battle Cry will also give you a plus one to your hit rolls for attacks made by friendly uh, melee weapons, uh, again using the free guild uh, keyword. So uh, there's more than one reason to use the, uh, the Rousing Battle Cry command ability, but it's a good one, especially when you have a charging free guild blocker units. 
when it comes to the other some of the other movement shenanigans we've got uh, a couple of ones that i really like is the battle mage uh, the battle mage the collegiate arcane battle mage specifically when you pick the battle mage there is one of eight spell laws and the one that i'm thinking about here is the uh the battle mage from gur now, Gur's spell, Wild Form, uh, it allows you on a casting value of 5, if successfully cast, to pick one friendly unit within 12 inches of the caster that is visible to them, and that allows them to add plus 2, plus two to their run and their charge rolls until the next hero phase. So when we start getting a little bit later into this video, and we start talking about some of the other things that come from the cities, and you start adding a plus two to a run and a plus two to a charge, or maybe we talked a little bit earlier about the, uh, the Darkling Covens being able to run and charge or run and shoot, and now we're adding an extra plus two to that. A nice little combination is starting to form. We've also got some other things. Things like Shadow Warriors can come out come out anywhere from the board um, and you don't have to set them up on the table which is awesome but another unit that works really well is the assassin the assassin is a hero and it has a rule called hidden murderer now instead of setting up the assassin on the table you set it up in reserve and basically you can pull it out of any unit of cities of sigma at the start of the combat phase if it has five or more models and it only has one wound characteristic so it's not going to synergize quite well with things like uh, let's say your demigriffs for example that have more than one wound but your free guild guard, you can pull it out of your again your your um, your phoenix guard. You can pull it out of your um, your your um, iron breakers, whatever whatever city's unit. As long as it has a wound characteristic of one, and you've got five or more models in that unit, the assassin can pop out. And if you want to put like a bit of a killy artifact on your assassin, uh, that would also allow them to pop out within uh, without you know at the start of combat and uh, again start getting assassiny. Uh, and if you do have a unit of Shadow Warriors, you could also put it in the unit of Shadow Warriors, pop the Shadow Warriors outside, uh, pop them out of nine as you would normally, and then pop the Assassin out. So there's a lot of shooting in Cities of Sigma. So let's look at the first. We'll look at the uh, Nomad Prince. The Nomad Prince is going to synergize quite well with things like your Sisters of the Watch or Sisters of the Thorn uh, when it comes to shooting. Obviously, when we get into combat, the rules will change a little bit. But with the, the Nomad Prince, you've got yourself the Lord of the Deepwood Host. And what that allows you to do is its command ability. At the start of your shooting phase or the start of your, start of your combat phase, uh, if you spend that command point, you can pick one friendly hero with the command ability, aka your Nomad Prince, and, and, and until the uh, sorry until the end of the, that phase, you can add one to the hit rolls for attacks made by the friendly Wanderers units if they're wholly within 12 inches of that hero. So uh, you can't use it more than once, so you can't spend two or three command points on a single unit of the Sisters of the Watch, but you could spend two command points and you could put one on the Sisters of the Watch, one on the Sisters of the Thorn. So um, if you've got a whole bunch of command points and you are a Wanderers army and you want to start building around this and maybe uh, add some rules from the Living City, this will work quite well to increase your shooting abilities from the Wanderers keyword. Back to our free guild friends and the free guild general. One of my personal heroes is the free guild general and his rule, uh, hold the line. Now hold the line is a command ability, uh, very similar to the Nomad Prince. And you apply this in the hero phase. So you, it's a little bit of uh, preempting that you need hold the line. If you do, you pick three friendly free guild units wholly within 18 inches of the free guild general. Uh, so free guild, free guild hero. Um, with the command ability, so our free guild general. Um, it doesn't have to be the general, it's just the name of the, the, the unit. And um, until the next, so to, until your next hero phase, you can add one to your hit and one to your wound rolls for attacks made by friendly units if they have not made a normal move or a charge in the same turn. So essentially imagine that your units are preparing for uh, to be charged or they're preparing just to stand and just act. So it's going to be awesome for things like your handgunners and your crossbowmen because they've got uh, a medium range to shoot and give themselves a plus one to hit, plus one to wound. Very, very tasty, especially if you've got more than 10 in that unit. Um, you can't, um, a unit can't benefit from hold the line more than once. So you can't stack it to get plus two or plus three. 
but this will work with your free guild crossbowmen, your free guild handgunners, your pistoliers, your hand, you know, and your outriders. However, know that if you did put it on your outriders or your pistoliers, they wouldn't be able to move because um, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna lose that. So uh, do keep that in mind. Maybe the uh, the rousing battle cry is better for your your pistoliers and your outriders, but certainly for your crossbowmen and your handgunners, this will work very nicely. When it comes to the Hurricanum, the Hurricanum is going to give the portents of battle, and that is going to add plus one to the hit rolls for attacks made by friendly Cities of Sigmar models within the range of the portents. So the portents ability is going to change um, depending, on, um, depending on how many wounds it's taken. And um, basically, yeah, so you get yourself a plus one to hit. There is a whole lot of things. In fact, everything in Cities of Sigma is going to have the Cities of Sigma keyword, where there's going to be increasing the shooting abilities of your handgunners, your Sisters of the Watch, your Sisters of the Thorn, your Iron Bra uh, your sorry, your um, yeah, your your, uh, your Iron Drakes, your your cro uh, your uh, Outriders, your um, your Pistoliers, your Volley Guns, your um, your Rocket Batteries. There's just so much shooting in Cities of Sigma. Your steam tank, again, as long as it's within that portents, that range of the portents, you are going to get plus one to hit. There's some additional other ways you can get some boat boost to your shooting. One is through the Lord Ordinator. This is a Stormcast Eternals model. And what it allows you to do, it keywords quite nicely with War Machine. So the rule we're looking for here is the Arcane Engineer. And that allows you to add plus one to your hit rolls for attacks made by order War Machines when they're wholly within nine inches of one of the Lord Ordinators. So the war machines that you're thinking about that are um, that are order war machines is your rocket batteries, your volley guns, your steam tanks, as well as your uh, celestial uh, ballistas. So if you do bring yourself in a stormcast celestial ballista, you could get yourself a plus one to hit. So uh, quite nicely, especially with the amount of damage that a rocket battery could possibly do. It's a little bit. It's a little bit hard to get the uh, the Lord Ornate to be chasing a, a up the battlefield with a steam tank, but it might be not quite nice for that first round of shooting. There are other ways that you can boost your shooting in Cities of Sigma, uh, whether it's through the Knight of Zeros, the Rune Lord, or a Cogsmith. The Knight of Zeros is one of your four choices, or one in every four choices from the Stormcast Eternals. And the rule that you're looking for here is the Illum Illuminator of the Lost, where you can reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by friendly units that target an enemy unit that's within 10 inches of the model. Now, the, basically what happens here is, imagine you get to reroll ones to hit, but the Knight, of, the, the, the Knight of Zeros needs to be within 10 inches of what you're shooting. So you don't put the Knight of Zeros next to your rocket battery, your handgunners, because that's not going to help. You essentially need to shine the light, the 10 inches. So basically it's, it's a high risk with high reward. You move the Zeros near um, your opponent and then you shoot it off the table. And if you don't shoot off the table, there's a good chance they're going to charge your Knight of Zeros. So uh, do, do keep that in mind. You've got your Rune Lord. The Rune Lord in the hero phase uh, can chant one of the following prayers. It does have some prayers. The prayers we're looking at here is the Fire Forge prayer. Basically, uh, you roll a dice to see if the prayer is successful. On a roll of a one, the prayer is not answered. On a roll of a two plus, the prayer is answered. And Fire Forge allows you to pick one friendly dispossessed unit that's wholly within 12 inches of this model. And until, until the start of your next hero phase, you can improve the Ren characteristic of that unit by one. So the unit that's going to benefit the most is going to be the Iron Drake. So Iron Drakes already have a Rend minus one shot. Making your Rend minus two Iron Drakes is going to be absolutely brutal. And there are some tricks that people have been using lately by using things like the Soul Screen Bridge to then teleport them up the board and, um, and you know, then to stack that quite nicely with something like the Warden King. You got yourself a Cogsmith. The Cogsmith is an engineer. Now, the Cogsmith, when you look at the War Scroll, the Cogsmith, you're not going to see any benefits to your War Machines. But it's actually on the Hellstorm Rocket Battery and the Volley Gun. On their War Scrolls, there is rules or benefits that say that if there is an engineer or an Iron World Arsenal engineer within range, 
they're going to get a boost. So on the rocket battery, you can reroll hit rolls of one for attacks by uh, with a model um, if it's within three inches of that friendly iron ruled arsenal engineer. So if you got yourself a cogsmith within three inches of the rocket battery, you are rerolling ones to hit. Um, so save yourself a command point, and uh, from memory, the rocket battery has three different shooting, so three different shots. Uh, so re-rolling ones, you know, might you might increase the success rate at least by one. And then obviously think about stacking it with that lord, um, that lord ordinator as well. You got yourself the volley gun, and the volley gun rule is um, you can re-roll any dice when determining the attack characteristics when it's within range of uh, three inches exactly when it's within three inches of the Iron World Arsenal engineer. So uh, the rocket battery, the rocket battery is going to be consistent. It's quite far range. Your volley gun is medium range, and it is a random amount of dice. So being able to re-roll any of the dice is just going to be awesome. Again. Stack it with the plus one to hit from the Hurricanum, uh, stack it with the Lord Ordinator, all of a sudden you have some very tasty, uh, hard-hitting shooting in the combination of the Cogsmith, uh, the Lord Ordinator, etc, etc. When it comes to combat, now this is where we are going to really hit the road here. So you got the free free guild general. The free guild general we talked earlier on his uh, griffin has the the rule rousing battle cry. So we talked about this a little bit earlier in the movement. You in, you can use his command ability at the start of your charge phase. If you do so, pick one friendly free guild hero with the command ability, and until that phase, you can add plus one to the charge rolls made by friendly free guild units that are wholly within twelve of that hero. And then you get to add plus one to hit. So we're increasing the likelihood to charge. And we're going to add plus one to the hit rolls made by free guild units that are wholly within 12 of that hero. So people are going to work really well. Again, we talked about this. The demigriffs, the... Um, the great swords, your free guild guard, um, it's going to help. Again, your pistolers, your outriders, they're not that great in combat, but getting them into combat will help. Again, pistolers do shoot on the charge, so you can get two rounds of shooting out of a unit of pistolers, which is great value. And should you find yourself with a free guild general on foot running around, uh, that could benefit as well. When it comes to the free guild general, we just spoke about the little one on foot as opposed to the one on the griffin. We do have hold the line. So hold the line, we, we mentioned earlier, you pick three friendly units within 18 of the general. Um, and uh, at, at, until the next of, next hero phase, you add one to the hit and wound rolls for attacks made by, by friendly units if they haven't moved. So um, you can use this if they're already in combat or if you're preparing to be charged. If someone's going to charge you, um, you can you know apply that rule. You're not confident of, of getting a double turn or if you know for a fact that um, your opponent is going to go next. Now you get plus one to hit and plus one to wound. Now it's quite easy in, in in the free guild to get your wound down, but you know get so you're hit down, but your wound um it's quite hard. So great rule here, especially when you start looking at things like your great sword and your free guild guard. Your dreadlord on black dragon, your order serpentus has a rule called "Do not disappoint me." Uh, it is a command ability, and at the start of the combat phase, if you do use this command ability. You can pick one hero that knows the ability, so our Dreadlord on Black Dragon, and it allows you to add plus one to the wound rolls for attacks made by friendly Order Serpentus units and uh, that are wholly within 18 of that hero. Now again, you can't use it more than once, so you can't stack it to give them a plus two to a plus three. But if you are taking things like your Dreadlord on Black Dragon, your Drakespawn Knights, your Drakespawn Chariots, or even your War Hydra, they will all work nicely by getting plus one to wound. And if you look at these uh, these particular war scrolls, they do have often a high amount of attacks. They often do get a charge bonus. Your Drakespawn Knights are going to get a nice little charge bonus. And they often have a lot of high rend. So any way to increase the wound roll uh, is always going to be well welcomed. We also then have, this is not to be confused, this is a completely different war scroll. This is not a Dreadlord on Black Dragon, it is the Sorceress on Black Dragon. So this is the Darkling Coven's equivalent. Now, you have a rule called Inspire Hatred. 
and it's a command ability, and you use the command ability at the start of the combat phase. So if you do so, pick one friendly Darkling Coven unit, and they have to be wholly within 12 inches of that Darkling Coven hero. Uh, what that allows you to do is it allows you to re-roll wound rolls of one for attacks made by that unit in combat. So again, you know, we can see there's a big range here. You got, you know, the Dread Spears, your, um, your, um, your Black Guard, your executioners, your um, your bleak swords, all those guys, as well as just your, um, your oh no, that's a scourge runner chariot. Ignore the scourge runner chariot. That shouldn't be there, um, or should it be? No, it's not. It's auto suspend. No, I, ignore that. Pretend that's not there, guys. Uh, the Warden King is the ancestral grudge. So you're dispossessed. You got the Warden King and. Uh, with this, it is a command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, you pick one enemy unit within 18 inches of the friendly hero with the command ability, our Warden King. And until the end of that phase, you can add one to the attack characteristics of, tar of attacks that make a melee weapon uh, that target that unit. So it's not going to help you shooting Iron Drakes, uh, although if they're in combat, it certainly will. But uh, it will give you plus one attack. Um, to all of your things like your hammerers, your, your iron, dra iron breakers, your long beards, um, your iron drakes should they find themselves in combat, as well as the rune lord. So uh, all ways to get yourself a plus one attack. That'll be quite quite tasty. Uh, speaking of the rune lord, you also have a nice little combination here. We talked a little bit about the uh, the rune lord's prayers. So uh, you roll a dice in the hero phase. Uh, you pick one of your prayers on a roll of a one. The uh, the Duarden gods ignore your prayer. On a two plus, they are answered. There are a couple of prayers you can choose from. Again, Fireforge allows you to have one friendly dispossessed unit within 12. And then at the start of your hero phase, you can improve the rend characteristic of one. So, um, so if you don't use it on your iron, uh, sorry, on your um, your iron drakes to shoot, you could bring it into your more combat focused Duard. And so, uh, keep that in mind. It could be something you use, you know, early on for shooting, and then towards late game, you might increase the rend characteristic um, of your your hammers, your long beards, and things like that. You know, Mad Prince, we talked about this rule before in a shooting context. We'll now talk about it in a combat context. And the same rule applies. It is Lord of the Deepwood Host, where the command ability, you can use it at the start of your shooting phase or at the start of your combat phase. In this case, we're going to use it in our combat phase. If we do so, basically, we pick one friendly hero with the command ability, so our Nomad Prince. And then uh, until the end of the phase, you get to add a plus one to the hit rolls for their attacks made by friendly Wanderers units that are wholly within 12 inches of the hero. So our more combat orientated uh, Wanderers are going to be our Sisters of the Thorn. Sisters of the Watch, again, shooting units that will benefit from it. But you've also got your Eternal Guard and your Wildwood Rangers. So all different Wanderers units, they're going to be able to benefit from that buff, as well as the, the Nomad Prince himself. Got the Black Ark Fleet Master. The Black Ark Fleet Master is got a command ability called At Them You Curs. And you pick one friendly Scourge Runner Privateer unit that is wholly within 12 inches of the friendly hero with the command ability. So that is our Black Ark Fleet Master. And you add one to the attack characteristics of the unit's melee weapons until the end of that phase. Now, you can't use it more than once. And there's that, that Scourge Runner Chariot. So ignore the Scourge Runner Chariot. I knew we should have ignored it in the Darkling Coven rule we just covered a little bit earlier. But the people who can benefit from, uh, who are the Scourge Runner, so who the Scourge Privateers, it is our Black Art Corsairs and it is our Scourge Runner Chariots that will get the most benefit from this rule. When we go towards our Phoenix style units, so our formerly High Elves, now Phoenix Temple, and we have the Anointed on Foot, but not just the Anointed on Foot, um, we've also got the Anointed on Frostheart Phoenix and the anoint the Anointed on Flames, the Flame Spire Phoenix. So, regardless of which Phoenix you take, whether it's Foot, the Anointed on Foot, Anointed on Frost or Flame, they all have this command ability called Captain of the Phoenix Guard. Captain of the Phoenix Guard is a command ability. You use it at the start of the combat phase, and if you do so, you pick one friendly hero with the command ability. 
and until your next hero phase, uh, you can re-roll wound rolls for attacks made by friendly Phoenix Temple units that are wholly within 12 inches of that hero. So who's going to benefit from this? The people who have got keywords are the Phoenix Guard, your, your Flames Fire Phoenix, your Frost Heart Phoenix, um, regardless if you take a Phoenix with or without the Anointed, so the hero or non-hero, they are all keyworded Phoenix Temple and all can benefit from rerolls to wounds. So if you take two, three, four Phoenixes, they're running up the board, you know, apply the Captain of the Phoenix Guard and you're going to be rerolling all your wound rolls. That's very, very tasty. Or if you've got a little anointed on foot running, you know, in combination with the Phoenix Guard, um, you'll be able to reroll your wound rolls. And hey, spend another command point to reroll ones to hit if you, if you really, really, really need it. We have the Portents of Battle. So we talked about the Portents of Battle for shooting. The Portents of Battle also buffs combat. So the Portents of Battle is sitting on the Celestial Hurricanum. And this allows you to add plus one to your hit rolls for attacks made by friendly Cities of Sigma keyworded models that are within range of the Portents. So the Portents we mentioned earlier, it does uh, degrade over time. So the more damage that the, the Hurricanum suffers, the Portents bubble will shrink. But it will give you plus one to hit on literally everything, whether it's your Demogriff Knights, whether it is going to be your Free Guild General, your, your Scourge Runner, or your Drakespawn Chariots, your Phoenix Guard, your Great Swords, your Free Guild Guard, your Wildwood Rangers, your Eternal Guard, your Hammerers, your Thunderers, you get the point here, guys. Plus one to hit from the Hurricanum is very, very, very attractive. And if you do take your or a Wizard on top, it does have some nice spells to choose from as well. So uh, the Celestial Hurricanum is a personal favorite of mine in Cities of Sigma. When it comes to Battle Shock, there are a couple of ways you can start mitigating or uh, reducing the, the effects of Battle Shock. Obviously, we have Inspiring Presence. We're not talking about this. But a couple of rules we've got here is the Phoenix Temple Hero. So the, uh, the Anointed, for example, has this rule called emboldened and what this allows you to do is it allows you to not take battle shock tests for any uh unit that is wholly within 12 inches of the phoenix temple hero so this is really tied into uh the combination of phoenix temple so your anointed is going to make sure that your phoenix guard um, are not going to run no other units it's not going to help your free guild guard it's not going to help you skirt your um your uh darkling coven but it will synergize quite well with your phoenix temple troops if you do take the warden king the warden king is going to combine quite well with your dispossessed so our dwarf units and using the oath stone in your hero phase you can say that the model stands on top of the oath stone if you do so until the start of your next hero phase, uh, so the your next turn actually, uh, the model can't move. So your Oathstone Warden King is not going to move. He stands on his little rock. But uh, in addition to the rules, you will get to ignore Battle Shock. So do not take Battle Shock for friendly dispossessed units that are wholly within 18 of this model. So um, if you are going to be prepared for combat and you stand on that Oathstone with the Warden King, you're going to save your command points by, uh, by, by, by not using Inspiring Presence. Finally, the Free Guild General is going to have a rule called Inspiring Leader. And uh, this is not a command ability, it's just an ability. And you can add one to the bravery characteristic of friendly Free Guild units when they're wholly within 18 of this model. So uh, a nice little boost to help uh, buff the bravery of our keyworded Free Guild. And we talked about them earlier. Your Free Guild Guard, your Crossbowmen, your Hand Gunners, etc, etc. Now... There is a lot of other units that we can synergize. And I think, you know, once you start looking at the War Scrolls, that's what we've kind of talked about so far. We've only talked about the War Scrolls here. But the next layer of synergy and the next layer of benefits is when we start supercharging our rules with the Cities of Sigma. Now, the Cities of Sigma, we've got our Hammer Hall, our Tempest Eye, our Greywater Fastness, our Anvil Guard, our Hallow Heart, our Phoenicium, our Living Cities. So, all of these sub-factions, these sub-allegiances, are going to give us a whole bunch of additional benefits depending on how you build your list. I'll pull out a couple of examples. By, by no means are these the only examples, but they are some of the examples that I really like. 
Now, the Righteous Purpose is a command ability that allows friendly uh, hammer hole units that are wholly within enemy territory to fight at the end of combat. So if you are looking to make a supercharged combat unit, um, you would be able to nicely uh, get them to fight again. You might look at the Hammer Hall Wings of Fire spell that is going to boost the, the ability to move around the table. And the Hammer Hall Lancer's Battalion will really improve the, um, the attack characteristics or the ability for demigriffs to uh, fight in combat. So uh, a nice little favorite if you are going Hammer Hall and you want to double fight with Righteous Purpose, you could also then combine it with the Hammer Hallian Lancers bring down your, uh, your your drops in deployment, as well as boost the abilities of Demigriffs. If you weren't going to take Hammer Hall and maybe you were taking Living City, uh, an example where you might get a nice little boost here is the Strike of the Meltaway, where you can use this command ability at the end of your shooting phase. If you do so, pick one friendly Living City's unit that shot in that phase, is more than nine inches away from the enemy and wholly within 18 of a living city hero. That unit can then move. Um, it can't run though, it can just move. Now the living city's benefit is if you take this city, you can choose uh, for every one unit you deploy on the table, you can put one in reserve and it comes in from the side. So imagine you got yourself a nice little shooting unit. Let's say it's a Let's say it's Drycha, or let's say that it's a uh, a Drake's uh, the, the what's it called the, um, the 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 black the black dragon um, the dreadlord on black dragon. Imagine you put the dreadlord on black dragon uh, in reserve. Uh, it comes out from the side. It uses its breath shooting attack. Then what you do, or you use a crossbow, maybe yeah, the, the unit has a crossbow or some type of missile weapon on the, the hero, uh, you shoot, regardless if you kill something or not, you then spend the command point to then move, uh, not run, but make a normal move, so you've really increased the ability to charge, uh, or at least reduce the risk of, um, of, of, of failing the charge when you've come out from the side. That's just one example. Um, Grey Water Fastness, you have the rule Home of the Great Iron Wheel Guilds, which increases the, the range characteristic of missile weapons by friendly Grey Water Fastness Iron Wheeled Arsenal. So that is your, uh, that is your, um, your uh, rocket batteries, that is your volley guns. Uh, from memory, it's also your uh, gyrocopters and your gyro bombers. All these things are um, uh, your Iron Wheeled Arsenal. Unfortunately, your hand gunners and your iron drakes are not iron wield arsenal, but those those shooting attacks uh, will increase their range by three inches. So um, the 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 rocket battery already has a really long shooting attack already. Plus three inches is is, is you know still helpful, but it will help for things like your volley guns, which are okay range i think it's like 12 or 24 inches there's two different shots you can make uh, so adding plus three to that is going to be very tasty things like anvil guard anvil guard has the home oh, sorry the anvil guard um, has got some additional rules you've got your ha hallow heart which has the mages of the witfire court which allows your Hallow Heart Wizards to cast an additional spell. So if you are going uh, real magical supremacy and you really want to double down on magic, you love your Hurricanum, you love your Battle Mages, you love your Sorceresses, but you want your, your Wizards to cast more, you can use not only the Hallow Heart Wizards getting an extra spell, but there is a nice little battalion that allows them to get uh, plus one to cast and plus one to unbind if they are next to each other. So there's a little buff piece there. So um, double down with your magic through Hallow Heart. Tempest Eye has some rules. Things like the Alert of the Forewarned adds plus three to the movement characteristic of friendly Tempest Eye units uh, until the next, uh, until the first, e the end of the first battle round. So you're gonna get plus three movement on all of your troops in the first battle round, as well as plus one to the armor saves your Tempest Eye. So if you think about something like uh, a Frost Phoenix or a Flame Phoenix that is already like movement, I think 16 or 15 from memory, plus three is is pretty crazy um so think about that or maybe thinking about even your stock standard troops that might have a movement characteristic of five or six or four by adding plus three it means you're challenging objectives early you're getting to the center of the board early it's going to increase the ability to charge um which is awesome as well 
Grey Water Fastness has the artillery company um, battalion. Uh, I think it is. I think it's a battalion that allows you your war machines to shoot first in the first turn. So, so you shoot twice in the first turn. So if you get yourself four rocket batteries, uh, buff it up with the Hurricanum, the Cogsmith, and the Lord Ordinator, you could really rain black powder on your opponent by shooting twice in your first turn. So that would do a lot of damage. We mentioned earlier the Whitfire Retinue, which was the Wizards in Hallow Heart getting plus one to cast, plus one to unbind. And then the funny thing about all of this is that different city cities also can bring in other units. So Tempest Eye, for example, one in every four units in your Tempest Eye army can be Corrosion Overlords. So you can bring in a Gun Hauler, you can bring in a, um, uh, you can bring in Arconaut Companies, you can bring in your Engine Riggers of Sky Wardens, you can bring in your, there's so many different ways that those, those guys can increase your ability to move around the table or increase your firepower. Um, Things like Tempest Eye has a spell called Aura of Glory that allows you to add plus one attack characteristic. Um, your Living City as well. If you take Living City, you can take one in every four units as Sylvaneth. So get yourself an Alariel, a Durthu, a Drycher, a unit of Kurnoff Hunters, or two units of Kurnoff Hunters. Maybe a Branch Wraith or a Branch Witch, whatever it might be. A Tree Lord Ancient or a Tree Lord. Tree Lord will get yourself some uh, Sylvaneth Wildwoods on the table, which might combine really well. But again, Again, there's so many different combinations you can start to pull through when you start looking at all the different war scrolls now I mentioned I couldn't be here for 10 years guys this is just a high level overview of all the different synergies that I thought I'd pull out that I thought would be va valuable to you but I'd love to hear from you which uh, which which synergies haven't I spoken about that you have found value in? Maybe I've missed it. Maybe I don't appreciate it as much as you, and maybe you want to explain to me how you're taking advantage of it. But either way, as more armies, as Stormcast gets expanded upon, um, as more cities might get unlocked, or uh, more units become more powerful. You know, right now, Sylvaneth isn't the strongest army in the world. But one War Scroll change, one points change, we saw, um, we saw Gun Haulers change, for example, from a 150 points down to 130 that made uh, Tempest Eye and Carriage and Overlords a bit more of an appealing um, uh, a combination. So again, the meta is going to change a lot. But again, share with me what's worked for you. What are you finding? What haven't I spo spoken about that you have found valuable? Um, as always, leave it in the comment section. I want to hear from you so we can all learn together uh, on how to make the best synergies in Cities of Sigma. I hope you found that discussion valuable. If you did, give the video the old thumbs up. And if you have a comment or an insight, leave it in the comment section below. The champions over here are my AOS Coach Patreons and YouTube members. So you guys are bloody legends. Thank you for all the support. If you want to know more about the support programs, the links are below down here in the episode description, along with the link to the Discord server, so we can continue this conversation. Until next time, don't forget to name your characters and have a good one.